Well, I'm delighted to be joined by Everton manager Carlo Ancelotti. How's uh, how's lockdown in Crosby been, Carlo? Hi, how are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I spend my time here in Crosby and uh, trying to rehabilitate my knees. I think is the the work is doing well. My knees are better, and uh, so um, I'm used biking, uh, walking on the beach. Crosby is really beautiful place. There is a beautiful trail from Crosby to to Southport. Yeah, biking, uh, really, really nice. Really nice. And I hear in the lockdown, everybody's been watching TV programs and you've been watching Money Heist. I was Money Heist. Was really, <laughs> really, really excited. Did you like it? Yes, I really enjoyed it. Very good. I, 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 I'm waiting to, for the season number five. <laughs> yeah, we can't wait. Well, if I can go back, Carlo, to your... You started your managerial career and you start at Reggiana, but the first big job with you know with the real big players was maybe at, at Parma. And I'm just wondering about your relationship and your decision to move on Gianfranco Zola. Was was that something that played a big part in your managerial career in the future going on from Parma? Yes, the, the, Parma, Parma was uh, the first uh, top professional team that I managed. I had Zola in that period. And at the beginning, uh, I was playing uh, 4 4 2. I, 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 I was not playing with uh, <clears throat> number 10 in that period. And so, the, 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 the first game of the season, I tried to put him on, on the right side, like a winger. He didn't like a lot. He, had, uh, he did well, in my opinion, but he would like to play in the middle. And so, having Crisp and Kier in front, I found a space for him on the, on, on the right side that it, it, it was, he, he was not so happy. At the, at the same time, he had uh, an opportunity to go to Chelsea. And in the January market, I think uh, he chose to go there and I left <clears throat> him to go. Well, the difference with how you treated someone like Zola, a similar type of player you had, at Juventus in Zinedine Zidane. Is it fair that your next job at Juventus, you maybe treated that player slightly differently in how you, you got him into the team? Yeah, having Zidane, I tried to, 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 to change my idea about the system. I think that Zidane was the first player that uh, let, gave me the possibility to, to change the system, to play in different way. And so when I had Zidane, I played uh, the first year in Juventus, I played with the system 3-4-1-2, having Del Piero inside in front, uh, Zidane a little bit behind. And the second year, I played with the back four, but keeping in front the uh, two strikers and one number 10 like Zidane. Zidane when... changed my idea about uh, football. I was so focused before Juventus in 4-4-2. And after that, with Zidane, I changed. I wanted to put him in the best position for him, to, to, to let him more comfortable on the pitch. Was it fair to say the 4-4-2 system was a big influence of, you know, Saki at Milan, and that was someone you worked with, with the Italian national team as well? Is that where that influence came? And so, basically... Zidane changed your philosophy really from, from the Saki model? In my um, player career, I had uh, Lee Dolm, that was, it was one of the first managers that, that played in zone, but it was not 4 4 2, it was at back four, but in midfield, uh, we, we, we didn't have a specific position. And after that, I had Ericsson in Rome. And he played 4 4 2 and Saki in Milan. And so I started training, uh, having the idea to play 4 4 2. And this idea changed, uh, as I said to you. After Parma, when I had uh, Zidane, I wanted to have Zidane in the comfortable position for him. How, how much did you learn at Juventus, you know, as a manager, and how much experience did you Because you come really close to winning the title, uh, I think, twice on the last day. And also you played Manchester United in the, 
semi-final of the Champions League in 99. You were really close to winning the big trophies. Did that, did that help you a lot with experience and how to deal with you know, pressure going forward in your managerial career? The experience in Juventus was good, in my opinion, because I, I, I understood really well how the club has to work for the manager. And so I was really... Uh, the, the, the club gave to me a lot of support in this. It doesn't matter if the second year that they, they they fired me at the end of the second year, but until the last day in Juventus, I understood that how the club has to work for the manager, to support the, the manager, to help the manager in front of the player, to give to the manager the power uh, <clears throat> that the manager needs to manage the players. What was the diff- decision you had to make with AC Milan? Was that difficult going back to a team that you'd, you obviously you played for? And it is that difficult to go back as a manager? I, I didn't understand, sorry. I think it was the dog. Was it the dog? Yeah, it was the dog. <laughs> it's the dog. I was saying when you go back to AC Milan as a manager, is that difficult when you've been such a great player at AC Milan to go back as a manager of a club? Well, first of all, uh, I think that the fact that I was in Milan as a manager, uh, the fact that I played there, I knew the structure of the club. I knew some players there because some of the players that I managed in Milan were my teammates, like Maldini, like uh, Albertini, like Costa Curta. And so this helped me at the beginning, of course, to build uh, um, a good period <clears throat> in Milan. You were very successful at uh, at Milan and, and two Champions League wins. But you know the first one against you know your old club Juventus uh, in England in we Manchester. We could win the third one. <laughs> oh, you know they, they, yeah, we stole it. You told me we stole it. I understand. But was that a big moment for you? That you know that first one, that first big trophy when Shevchenko scores the penalty, was that a huge moment for you in AC Milan after what has happened at Juventus? I think it, it was <clears throat> the final in Manchester against Juventus. It, it was a good, a good revenge for me, but it was not a revenge. I think it was really important for me that that uh, that uh, victory because it was my first one, so the, the, the Champions League in two thousand three. Why, why, why was my first trophy and for this reason was really important. And uh, I, I was really comfortable in Milan because, uh, the, as I said, the support that I had from uh, Mr. Galliani, for example, for Mr. Berlusconi was really strong, really strong support. I, feel, I felt in Milan like at home, mm. like a family. Mm. I was just talking about the player who got the goal in that game in, in Shevchenko and he was one of the you know the greatest strikers in the world when you were managing him. I was just wondering, was there any comparison between him and maybe Marco Van Basten, a player who you played with was maybe the best striker in Europe when he was playing? I think that they were both fantastic strikers, scored a lot of goals. The difference was that I think that Van Basten was one of the most talented strikers that I have ever seen. Shevchenko... A lot of power at the beginning. Shevchenko was able to run and to sprint a lot of time during the game. And uh, different characteristic, but the same goal, the same objective, score goals, and they scored a lot. Was it difficult to leave AC Milan because of your history as a player, how successful you were as a manager? Was it difficult to leave or was the, was the Premier League a big incentive to come? I think that was uh, the, the, the right decision from both sides. I, I, it was not so difficult because after eight years, I needed to change. And maybe at the same time, the club needed to change. And so we, I think we decided together. We, were, we didn't have problem to... I think it was the right time to decide. I wanted to, to have a new experience uh, outside Italy. And so I had the opportunity to go to Chelsea and... But it was a good decision. It was not difficult to choose. Is it, is it more enjoyable or easier as a manager in England than it is in Italy? More enjoyable, yes. The, 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 there, are, uh, there is less pressure here 
from uh, the supporter, the, the atmosphere is better in England. I, I, I came back to Italy uh, after nine years and I, it didn't change a lot. <laughs> the pressure is the same. <laughs> the supporter, uh, there is a lot of uh, violence, sometimes Russians. Of course, the, 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 the Italian football is trying to change, but it's not easy to change the culture of a country where, unfortunately, I think some um, there is violence. There is still violence, insult. And so uh, here in England, the people uh, in the stadium, and I'm talking only about the stadium, I mean, uh, is more respectful. When you come to Chelsea and you work for a man who changes managers a lot in Roman Abramovich, how was your relationship with him and how was it? what was it like to work with him at Chelsea? No, I think it was a good, was a good relationship with him. I didn't talk with him a lot, but uh, as I said, uh, the support was there and uh, I needed support. The second year was more difficult, but the first year was really fantastic. Of course, they, the, the club... Uh, had uh, the goal for the Champions League. Uh, we know, but the fact that we won the first year the Premier League and, uh, and the FA Cup was really important and, and really exciting. The, the, the second year was more difficult, I think, because we had some problem. We had Drogba with malaria and this kind of problem. We started really well and we finished really well, but the middle of the season was, was not so good. I've mentioned some big players you had at your other clubs and I mean the big players at Chelsea, there was lots of them there, but especially John Terry and Frank Lampard, the you know, the English players there. I mean, how were they to work with? And is it surprising that you see Frank Lampard now managing Chelsea, or did you expect that? No, I'm not surprised because uh Frank uh, had uh, as a player a fantastic tactical uh, uh quality. I'm waiting now John Terry as a manager. Is an assistant, but uh, I think that they have both uh, the quality to, to be a good manager. And uh, of course, uh, Frank is doing really well at Chelsea now. I mean, you mentioned Drogba also there and how much you missed him. I mean, that team at Chelsea had a great spine. You think of, you know, Peter Cech, John Terry, Lampard, Didier Drogba, and you see what Drogba did in the Champions League final, getting the winning goal, and you say how much you missed him. In the second season, he was a huge player for you, Drogba. Ah, Drogba was fantastic. The first year he scored 36 goals, but to, to mention Dobra mean, means to forget uh, Anelka, for example, Maluda, uh, Joe Cole, Kalou. I had really a fantastic team. Balak in the middle, Lesien, Deco, and so uh, at the back, Alex, uh, Ivanovic, so, uh, Ashley Cole. The team was really, really a fantastic team. And it, when I arrived, the team was there. I didn't build the team. The team was already there. And so I, I was really excited to train this kind of player, this kind of, of power. Imagine when, when uh, you, you, you needed to prepare a set pieces, you had, I don't know, John Harry, Alex, Drogba, Balak to, to mm -hmm. jump. And so it, it was not so difficult to score on set pieces. Carlo, you were always mentioned that you would go to Real Madrid at one stage of your career. You're always linked uh, to that job. For managers, is that the job in world football, managing Real Madrid? I think that uh, when you are a manager, you have to try to manage one day in your life Real Madrid. I spent two years there and it was an uh, unforgettable experience because... I think the, the Real Madrid is the best club in the world for, I don't know, the image that they have outside. Everywhere we went to Real Madrid, in every country, there were a lot of people there to, to see you. They wanted to see you, to, to support the team. And so it's, it's an unforgettable experience, a club uh, at the top organization, fantastic training ground and fantastic team at the time <clears throat> when I arrived. The team had uh, some problems uh, in the past years when I arrived there. <clears throat> the fact that they were not able to win the Champions League for 12 years was uh, like an, an obsession for them. 
because Real Madrid is used was used to win a lot of Champions League, and uh, I had the luck to uh, the first year to 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 win the Champions League. You obviously managed some great players, and another one was Cristiano Ronaldo at Real Madrid. I mean, how how easy or maybe sometimes how difficult was it in terms of dealing with Ronaldo and how he was as a player? And is it a case you have to build your team around him? Uh, I think that uh, in general, I had, uh, I trained a fantastic player. Uh, <clears throat> it's the easiest way to manage a fantastic to be a manager, to manage the fantastic player because they are professional, they are serious, they have personality, they are motivated. And so it's the easiest way. You, are, you don't have to build a team around Cristiano Ronaldo. And as I said for Zidane, <clears throat> you have to put them in the more comfortable way on the pitch. It doesn't matter. You, I think that you don't have to be strict tactical, tactically with this player, defensively, because... There are players that are more involved in the attacking phase and there are players that have to be involved more in the defensive phase. And so, of course, they have to work together because the team is the most important part of the game. But like striker like Ronaldo that are able to score every single game, you, you, you don't have to give too much information defensively. Well, we'll talk on defensively. Another huge player at that club was Sergio Ramos, and the goal he scored was the vital goal in the Champions League final. How how big of a, a player and a presence is Sergio Ramos at Real Madrid? Sergio Ramos has a fantastic quality. I think that the best quality that they have is not tactically, it's not technically, it's the character, the personality that they, they that he has, and the ability that he has to motivate the people around him, like uh, their teammates. Sergio Ramos in that period was important for this. Always at the top when the game was uh, important and also at the top when in the key moment of the games. Carlo, you're now at Everton back in the Premier League. Did, was it always your wish to come back to the Premier League when you left Chelsea? Uh, yes, yes. First of all, I wanted to come back to Italy and uh, I had experience in Napoli and it was a good experience uh, there. But I, um, if I had to choose a league, uh, I wanted to come back to, to Premier League for the atmosphere that you feel here and for, uh, yeah, above all for the atmosphere that um, you can, uh, that the Premier League has. And the mm. fact that I had the opportunity to come to Everton it was really important. Everton is a, a, a club with a fantastic history, of history fantastic tradition, and uh, and uh, they have the goal to be at the top. And so we are trying to, if, if we are able, after the COVID, uh, we are trying to do our best. You, ha you haven't seen your players now for probably six to eight weeks uh, with what's happened, COVID-19. But as a manager, are you looking forward to maybe seeing the players and getting back into training maybe in the next few weeks? Yes, of course. I miss, uh, I miss my player. Uh, uh, through my staff, we are in contact with them. They work a lot at home. But of course, every one of us would like to start, to start... Uh, Soon, this is not the comfortable way we would like to work. We would like to spend time together. The, 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 this, this is what uh, I like more: to stay with my pa to player, players, and to train with them, and to work with them, to talk with them. And so, I hope that soon we can be able to do this. Carlo, you know Everton now a lot better than when you first joined the club. Do you think Everton are closer to the top than you thought they were when you first joined, or do you think they've maybe faded away? I think everyone in the club is working to to try to be at the top soon. Of course, it, there is a lot of competition here in Premier League, but uh, I think that we have a possibility. We have a possibility, financial possibility. We have a good goal. We are building a new stadium, and so we are. We we know that. Uh, Behind us, there is a fantastic supporters, fantastic fan that help us to be motivated. So, 
I think that soon we can be competitive. Well, Carlo, thank you. I appreciate that. And maybe I'll see you on our little walk once a day, maybe on Crosby Round by the Beach. Yes, I hope to see you soon, maybe on the beach in Crosby. Yeah, yeah. We'll see you by the Iron Men. Yes, have a good day. Okay, thanks, Carlo. Thank you and all the best. Stay Bye. safe. Ciao.